Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Xiaomi 14 Pro. And if you're not familiar with this device, it's actually the first handset to mass market with the all new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And I'm going to tell you right now, when it comes to performance on this new Qualcomm SoC, it is a game changer when it comes to the Android handset market because uh, we haven't seen anything this powerful in an Android phone or tablet yet. And I'm sure in the future, Qualcomm will release more powerful chips. But the 8 Gen 3 right now is definitely where it's at. And that's really going to be the main focus of this video. I want to get some performance testing out of the way to show you what this thing can really do. Overall, Xiaomi has done an absolutely amazing job designing the 14 Pro. It's a really good looking Android phone. We've got an absolutely beautiful display here and we will be going over the specs. They're also moving away from Mi OS over to Hyper OS. But one of the main claim to fames here for the 14 Pro are the rear and front cameras. Around the back, there's three 50 megapixel cameras, and these were done in conjunction with Leica. Now, I won't be doing much camera testing in this video. Like I mentioned, this is more of a performance test, but if you're interested, I can make another video. Just let me know in the comments below. Inside of the box, along with the Xiaomi 14 Pro, we also get a TPU case. This one happens to be black, but I've seen some people get a clear case. Not exactly sure what that's about, but we also get a 120 watt fast charger. Now the main thing I'm interested in here is that new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. It's a 4 nanometer chip and with this we actually get one Cortex X4 core running it up to 3.3 gigahertz and they kind of switched up the core arrangement a little bit from the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 because now we have five Cortex A720 cores running at 3.2 gigahertz and two Cortex A520 cores running at 2.3. We no longer have those really small 1.8 cores, so this is definitely going to give us some CPU performance here, having more cores running at those higher clocks. And for the GPU, we've got the Adreno 750, which is definitely offering a giant jump in performance even over the Gen 2. You can pick this up with either 12 or 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5X RAM, 256, 512, or 1 terabyte, but all of them use UFS 4.0 storage, and the storage on this thing is really fast. When it comes to the display, we've got a 6.73 inch 120 hertz LTPO AMOLED at 1440 by 3200. It does support Dolby Vision, HDR10+, and this will do up to 3000 nits of brightness in uh, daylight mode. It does get really bright. We've also got Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, 4880 milliamp hour battery with 120 watt quick charging capabilities. And like I mentioned, they are moving away from MiOS with this new operating system, but this is based on Android 14. It's known as HyperOS. And speaking of HyperOS, we've got a very smooth interface here, but it's very reminiscent of uh, MiUI. So if you're used to using that, everything's basically in the same place here. And by the way, the Xiaomi 14 Pro that I have here has 12 gigs of RAM. Now uh, with this 120 hertz display, we do have the option to go to 60 hertz if we want to. We've also got that sunlight mode, which brings us up to 3000 nits. And yeah, this thing can definitely get bright. Great for outdoor viewability right here. And I'm not sure how well it's going to transfer over to a YouTube video, but yeah, it does make a huge difference. Another thing I wanted to mention here were the performance profiles we have on tap from the battery settings. So obviously going to performance is going to give us max performance. You could uh, set this up to balance and really never even notice the difference. But for all of my testing, I do have this set up in performance mode. And the first thing I wanted to show off here were some benchmarks. Here's Geekbench 6, and on the left hand side we've got the Xiaomi 14 Pro with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. On the right hand side we've got the Galaxy S23 Ultra with the uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. This is a device that I own. As you can see, on the Xiaomi, single core, 2149. Multi, really, really close to 7,000. Pretty awesome to see the Snapdragon chips breaking 7,000 in the multi-core with Geekbench. But let's go ahead and check out some GPU performance here. Here's 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a Vulcan benchmark. On the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, 5,178. As you can see on that Gen 2, we're right there at uh, 3,786. And I've seen this tap out a little higher, tap out a little lower on that Gen 2. Really depends on the device. But yeah, I mean, we've got a significant bump in GPU performance on the Gen 3. And the final benchmark I have here is Antutu. And as you can see, that Gen 3 is now breaking 2 million. We're a little above 2 million there, which is absolutely amazing. And if you take a look down the list here, obviously, I mean, we beat out that Gen 2 in all of these CPU, GPU, memory, and UX. 
Next thing I wanted to take a look at was some native Android gaming. And first up, Minecraft. Just wanted to show it off real quick. Always have people asking. Of course, we're going to be able to run this. I didn't have to turn any of the settings down or anything like that. So let's take it up a notch. We've got Call of Duty Mobile. And with this, we're totally maxed out HD textures, and we can run this at 90 FPS all day long. You might notice I do have an FPS counter up in the top left hand corner. I know it might be a bit hard to see, but with these Xiaomi phones, you can enable this through the developer options. This is the little performance overlay. Gives us the on-screen FPS and it is real time. So yeah, I mean, we can go up with this game, no problem at all. But of course, there's one game that really struggles on a lot of Android chips, and that's Genshin Impact. But with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, I'm at the highest settings, 60 FPS. And you will see this dip down. Goes down to around 56 every once in a while. And, you know, I'm going to chalk a lot of this up to the development of the game itself. iOS always gets the love when it comes to Genshin Impact. I mean, we still don't have native controller support over here on Android. But this is definitely the best performance that I've seen out of this game on Android so far. And it's really coming down to that much more powerful GPU. And that's one thing that's really going to help out with upscaling our favorite emulators. So the first thing I wanted to take a look at was some PSP using PPSSPP. We're going to be able to play all of these games, but we can actually go up to 4K now on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Definitely overkill for the screen here. But the fact that we can take Chains of Olympus up to 8x resolution with the PPSSPP emulator on that Gen 3 is really awesome. On the Gen 2, kind of maxes out about 5x. And yeah, again, I mean, even playing this at 2x on a smaller screen like this is going to look good. But it's still really awesome that we can go to 4K. Next up, we've got some GameCube and Wii emulation using the Dolphin emulator. Here's Tatsunoko versus Capcom. OpenGL back in 1080p. The highest I've been able to get this game on an Android device is 720. And going from 720 to 1080 on a smaller screen like this doesn't make a huge difference. But uh, one thing we actually haven't taken a look at with this device yet is HDMI over USB. And yeah, over USB Type-C we can plug this into a larger device. So upscaling on an external monitor would definitely make a huge difference. But one of the most impressive things here with the Dolphin emulator was the fact that we can actually run Rogue Squadron at 720p, still using that OpenGL back end. And in the past, we've gotten real close to full speed at native on the Gen 2. But with this, we can actually take it up to 720p. And uh, FPS is up in the top right hand corner. You see a dip every once in a while, but it's really not that noticeable in gameplay. And of course, at the native resolution, you can get a nice steady 60 with it. But I wanted to go up to 720p to see if we could do it. I also wanted to take a look at some PS2 emulation using EtherSX2. Here's Gran Turismo 4, and we're upscaled to 4x right now with this using that OpenGL back end. I didn't even go over to Vulkan because we got really great performance here. But yeah, this GPU is definitely putting down some power given the fact that we can upscale to 4x with this game. And uh, we'll move over to something a little harder to emulate. And that's going to be God of War 2. If you've ever tried this on your Android device, you know that, uh, you know, with some stuff, it's just impossible to run without any kind of uh, cycle skipping. With this, we don't have any cycle skipping going on. OpenGL back in, 3x resolution, running at a constant 60. I originally went into this at 4x, and I did have a few dips here and there. But yeah, I mean, at 3x with God of War 2 on an Android device is absolutely amazing. Another emulator that I was really excited about testing on this device was Yuzu for Switch. But it's still a bit early for the GPU drivers here with the uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So unfortunately, even with the development version of Yuzu for Android, I'm only getting a black screen. I've tried absolutely everything. Installing firmware, changing all of the settings. But unfortunately, we've just got that black screen. Now sound is working in the background, and I can actually press some buttons here, get into the menu, but we're not going to see anything on screen. The emulator will definitely be updated in the future to support the chip, and I got a good feeling that it's going to run Switch games like no other. And before I wrap this video up, I just wanted to show you that, yeah, the Xiaomi 14 Pro does support video over USB Type-C, so we do have alt mode here. So you can definitely connect this to a larger display, but unfortunately, right now, the way it is, we don't have any kind of desktop mode. And going into the development settings, or the developer settings, and turning on forced desktop mode to HDMI just doesn't work as well as it really should. 
Hopefully they do add a productivity mode here because we've got a lot of power with this new chipset. So overall, I've really been enjoying the Xiaomi 14 Pro. It's a great Android handset. Absolutely beautiful display here, up to 3000 nits of brightness with daylight mode on. The color I chose here was the one I definitely wanted coming in at green, but they do offer a limited edition titanium version. I'm not exactly sure how much they're charging for that one, but it sure does look good. But yeah, I mean, I'd say for at least me, the main draw to this is that Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, and it is an absolutely amazing performer. If you're interested in learning a little more about the Xiaomi 14 Pro or maybe picking one up, I'll leave some links in the description. And I will have a couple more videos coming. There's a lot more that I want to test with this device. So if there's anything else you want to see on that Gen 3, let me know down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.